Hi everyone and thanks for taking a look at ProBuilder 2.0 milestone number one. So this first milestone is really just catching up to 1.x and then we did add in actually ended up quite a bit. So this is looking really good and let's just take a look at the first thing which most people are interested in which would be upgrading your 1.x scenes up to 2.0. So first of all, with this, make sure you back up your entire project just to be sure. You never know what might happen. In fact, there's a couple things we know are going to happen. Number one, looking at this, once I upgrade this 1.x scene, you're going to lose things like UV, rotation, and scale. They're just going to be gone, but the material itself stays, so you're fine in that regard. Obviously, we're going to make sure that update script works perfectly once we have... Um, ProBuilder 2.0 fully out and ready, but for now just be aware that you'll definitely want to update, or sorry, I mean back up your entire project first before you update and bring in 2.0. Just common sense, and also because it's definitely still, you know, in the development phase. So let's go ahead and import 2.0. That's the first thing you want to do. Don't delete the old version, ProBuilder 1.0. Just go ahead and import 2.0. Take a moment or two to come in there. Okay, so that's in. Now we just need to uh, run the update script. So go to Window, down to Pro Builder, not 6x7 anymore, just simple Pro Builder here. And then click on Update All Objects and Scene to 2.0. Click on OK Update, it'll go through. And as you can see, it just knocked off any of the UV settings, but it still has the correct material. So no worries if you don't want to use this on your scene right now. Obviously, that's probably a good idea. Uh, just test it out for now, but we'll have this working perfectly by the end. Anyway, we have our scene, and let's look at how this works. If you remember, uh, a big thing here is that previously in ProBuilder, it was many little items inside each um, object, the ProBuilder object. Now it's simply one. So just one single mesh. This is great for draw calls, great for just cleaning up the hierarchy as well and various other things that are going to come to light as we go on. But it also adds the ability for us to seamlessly move in between any of the editing modes. So now I can simply select an object and then click again. Unless it breaks. Oh, of course, you're going to need to open up the Pro Builder window. So there we have either the editor floating or editor dockable. And a lot of people requested the dockable over the floating. I think they're crazy, but you have both now. So let's open up floating. And now with that open, with any ProBuilder object selected, simply click again and you're instantly into the face editing mode. You can hit C on your keyboard and you'll move into or toggle between the face mode and vertex mode. So I can edit just like that. Very quick and simple. This makes it a lot easier and faster to edit things than before when you didn't have these uh, this seamless moving between and, and editing things. So with editing, you also have the texture editor, which has changed a little bit. We've got some cool new options in this. Mainly when you select an item, obviously in texture edit mode, you'll notice that you don't get the move handles. However, you do have the ability to see which face is selected a lot better, so you still have the overlay on this. You can turn that off with the Highlight Selected Faces toggle, which can be handy, but generally you'll want to see which face it is that you're actually editing. And once again, you can move right into the edit mode very quickly. No need to actually swap modes or anything like that on each one. So we have a couple new options here. Number one, the Fill Mode. Now let's look at this one here, actually. We have the options for Tile, Stretch, and Normalize. So just to make this a little more obvious, let's go ahead and edit this up a bit. Make it not so perfectly square. Something like that. OK, so going back to the Texture Editor. With the face selected, and I'll turn off that highlight, we have some really neat options here. We have the normalize, which was there before, and that basically makes this as if it were a complete perfect square UV map all the way up, all the way over, 100%. There's also now a stretch option. So as you can see, it's stretching it to fit in the best possible way. And then we have the extra awesome justify modes. So we can justify it to the right. So everything's sticking to the right corner if you see the, the grid boxes there can justify it to the left, so it's to the left obviously, and so forth. Top, bottom, 
and even center, which is handy in a lot of special cases, and simply none if you want it to be regular. And this, uh, the rest of this scale offset is about the same rotation as well. You'll also notice that you now have two items down here for the queued material and the selected material. So this is where you can quickly paint and such using the queued, and then the select is going to show you what's on there right there, so you're not uh, having to swap between the two so often. And the rest is pretty much the same as 1.x, so we won't get into that too much. Next on the list, you could say just getting better and better here, is the new shape button. And this is something that we were thinking of not really bringing in until we had a bit more added and um, introduced it as the next milestone, but since it's pretty much working, might as well go ahead and get some use with this. It's a really, really neat addition. So again, bringing in some of the power of hammer, you can now create the extra items such as stairs and cylinders. And let's create a little more interesting cylinder, just like so. So when you create it, you can set the height, the number of, in this case, basically uh, divisions on the cylinder. And the same with the stairs, you can set how many steps, the width, the height, the depth, all that good stuff, whether it extends to the floor and generates the back, all sorts of things with that. Then of course, you can edit it, this just the same as any other ProBuilder object, no difference. Same here, just like so. So those are really handy and we'll definitely be adding a lot more to this. We've also kept on the in development item here or the old developer item where you can, if you really have good maths going on, you can type in exactly what you'd like to build. Uh, very tricky, but maybe, hey, if you've got the use for that, it's there just in case. So anyway, that's shape creation. And next, let's take a, a look at one other much requested item, and that is creating prefabs. So this is a big, big deal. Uh, definitely makes a lot of things easier. You can now select any object or multiple objects. So just select one Pro Builder, select another. This won't work yet if you're selecting items other than Pro Builder objects. So make sure you're just selecting Pro Builder objects and click on Create Prefab. You can't drag and drop them into the project folder. We've got to do uh, basically just some fancy things in the background and then click create prefab instead again no drag and dropping to the project folder just select the items and click create prefab it does some thinking drops in a new pre, uh, prefab pro builder object so i can drag and drop that into my scene and there we have it so this way you can build a complex item with multiple parts and then drag and drop it in of course it works just fine with a single object as well but this way very handy to use if you have a you know pillar built out of various pieces or a room that you want to move around, all sorts of things like that. So very, very handy. One last thing to show is the new zone method. So let's say we create just a simple cube, which by the way is just control K now if you want to do that. We're trying to add in shortcuts for everything, all the major items. So we have this cube and let's say I want to build a zone or something, some sort of a collision zone or occluder or trigger, whatever it might be. I can build it up just like you would normally. And then when you have it ready, just go ahead and set the entity type to whichever you want. So occluder will automatically set the material, trigger, collision, etc. So this we felt was just much more intuitive than before where you had to apply the material, which made sense to those of us who've used hammer the hammer editor before because that's how you did it you apply the material but it seemed a little backwards apply a material to set an entity type not so good now you set the entity type and that applies the material so just a lot more straightforward than it was before otherwise they all should work exactly as they used to and we also have the ability to simply toggle on and off whether these zone objects are shown simple as that. Uh, we had a button for that before, now it's just a toggle, which again makes a little more sense. Trying to make everything as simply usable and obvious as we can. And that's it really. This has been a pretty quick and rushed intro to ProBuilder 2.0, milestone number one, but I'm sure everyone wants to just get out there and take a look at this, and most of you have used ProBuilder 1.x enough that this should all basically make sense, and it's still a pretty simple basic GUI, so easy to figure out. We'll obviously make this much more pretty in the future, but for now this is working well. 
and feel free to or you know definitely post your thoughts on all this on facebook or the forums or unity i'll have a post on there as well so thanks for looking and hope you like